What's up guys, it's Steve, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at this guy. It's the Sigma 56 millimeter F 1.4 or Sony. Now, straight off the bat, look how small this lens is. It's absolutely tiny. Uh, when I fix it up to my Sony a6400, I can literally chuck it straight in a pocket. So I love that uh, factor, because currently the, the sort of neck strap that I use uh, it's not great, um, it swings about a bit, uh, it's pretty annoying, so to be able to just dump this in my pocket, really, really handy. Um, weighs about 280 grams, so it's it's not heavy um, either. I'll put the, the dimensions of it on screen now for you. So with 56 millimeter on the APS-C format, put in the, obviously, the one and a half times crop, you've got an 84 millimeter full, full frame sensor equivalent. Um, f1.4 which we all know and love get that super blurry background that bokeh those portraits whether it be professional work or just your social media work they, they look stunning the bokeh is great um, i'm not going to go into any of the pixel people peeping chromatic aberration fringing all that stuff there's plenty of that on um, youtube if you're into that but for me for my purposes i'm not a professional this is for youtube this is for social media I think probably any lens takes fantastic pictures, videos. This one's no different. Great autofocus, um, in and out. I mean, obviously that's the 16 mil doing that, but look, the 56 mil is just as good. So I love that about it. Um, videos, great. Although I don't really use it for video, it's a bit um, narrow in focal length for me. So I don't really use video for it, but for pictures, um, I love it. To be honest, I was shooting a lot of pictures on the 16mm Sigma and I was like, this is too wide, I don't want to do landscape photography. So I thought, skip the 30, pick up what's known as the APS-C Portrait Master, the best of them all, I'll get the 56. So I've been using the 56 and now I'm like, oh, to be honest, I think I want something even more zoomed. So I'm going to look at either the Sony or probably more likely the Viltrox 85mm just because it's cheaper. But yeah. I love this lens. I really do like this lens. Uh, great for B-roll, B-roll footage, um, which you saw at the beginning of this. Um, I got myself a new slider. I don't really know how to work it yet. It's ter terrible. It wasn't great, but bear with me. There'll be some better. There'll be some better B-roll coming for sure. So with a minimum focal distance or focus distance, should I say, of 50 centimeters or 0.5 of a meter. Um, that's not bad, that's not bad at all. I think you can get slightly closer. Obviously, if you wanna stick some uh, macro extensions on this, you can get some fantastic sort of macro shots, but just obviously bear in mind that um, you'll need a lot more light because as, you, as you're making this longer with the macro extensions, you're gonna need more light because your focus area is smaller. So just bear that in mind. Um, so now I've taken some photos with this and some video. So coming up is some examples of that. Bear in mind though, I did use variable aperture ND filter for the photos and videos, so just take that into consideration. Um, settings that I used are on the unedited picture and enjoy.
So let's get to sort of like the elephant in the room, the, the big one, price. So currently this is £369 here in the UK, um, which, is, which is pretty pricey. And I'll tell you why, because you can buy the Sony 50mm FE, which is obviously the full frame lens, but it works on APS-C, for £159 currently. Or you can get the APS-C version, for, sorry, yeah, the APS-C OSS version for, I think it's 239. So they're undercutting this lens by, what, 200 and 150 pounds, which is quite considerable if you're only like me, sort of amateur, budding um, photographer, videographer, doing it for YouTube, social media, a bit of fun. If you do professional work, then by all means, pick this lens up because I think it is, um, as other videos on YouTube have said, slightly better. Um, I don't regret picking this up, but if I'm honest, had I known about the 50mm being so cheap from Sony, I probably would have bought that instead. Because for my use case, the difference is, is probably pretty minimal. Yeah, I've watched some videos comparing them now, and yeah, the 56mm does edge it in, in most of the, or the, the Sigma, should I say, yeah, the 56mm edges it in a lot of the areas. But yeah, it's a lot more money. It's 200 pounds more, or probably $200. That could go towards another lens. It could go towards that Viltrox 85mm that you want as well. You see, plenty of co competition there. So to wrap this one up, I would say, if you're looking for the best of the best, or you just want to spend the most, get the Sigma. If you're a hobbyist, if you're an amateur, if you're doing it for YouTube, and you want to try out 50mm, get the Sony. But I would get the OSS version if you don't have an A6500 or an A6600, because um, the OSS will just help you out, especially if you're gonna do in videos, that'd be great. So as ever guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, really helps the channel out, appreciate it. Uh, following slowly increasing, so that's good, the subscribers are going up. Um, plenty more photography stuff to come, plenty more coffee, a bit more tech. So yeah, hit that subscribe button. Um, let me know down in the comments if you've got Viltrox 85mm, what you think of it. I'd be uh, interested to know. And with that, guys, I'll catch you in the next one.